Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Grady, the uh, owner of Sub Overland. Sweet. And this is our show about anything and everything off road. Uh, as always, we are socially distanced. It's literally the only way we can make the show because Ross and I refuse to move. Literally. Yeah. This yeah. is 139 episodes of the podcast, and neither one of us wants to leave our home. So, uh, Ross is in the Northeast, is in Connecticut. I'm in Kansas City, and Grady's in Idaho. Idaho. See, sometimes I have to uh, do a little research and guess because overland and off road owners tend to travel sometimes. Like we, yeah, we have some recurring guests where it's like you really never know where they're going to be. <laughs> you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> Which one? Let's well, just stir on that. Huh? I was like Dan Greck. Like which one? Like how, uh, no, how far Greg's you want to go here? He's, like he's pretty. <laughs> you can at least pick out what continent Dan yeah. Greck's on. Yeah. So we'll so, we'll come back. But to no, this. we have a bunch of people that jump between like Baja, and Montana, and British Columbia, and wherever. So yeah. Um, nice. Now I understand. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh-huh. Um, you had something done to the GX. What did you do to the GX? I had the extremely intensive uh, addition of shims added to the hinges on the rear door. Um, so JW Offroad is the company that made the tire carrier that I put on the Lexus. And um, and there's a couple of things that are done to reinforce the strength of the side swinging tailgate, which, um, you know, it's kind of tricky because like all around the world, they sell it as a, as a Land Cruiser Prado and it has a factory rear door mounted spare tire. Right. Um, in the States, it's the Lexus GX and it, it doesn't have the tire. So we added the tire <laughs> carrier, which obviously adds some weight. And also as light as the um, the trail light wheels are. And and I mean, the, the AT3s aren't super light, but like I've also run tires that were 20 pounds heavier, you know? Um, yeah. So so there's three things you do to basically like reinforce the structure of the tailgate. There's this like, head slider thing that goes underneath where the door closes between that and the bumper. Um, there's a slightly larger thing. I don't even know what it's really called. That goes where the door closes and goes <laughs> over it. Um, and then there's these like shims that go okay. in on the, on the door itself to bring the, uh, the geometry out so that it's a little more stout. So in um, technical terms, you helped your door pump some weights and now it can support your spare better uh it's less bad at supporting the spare but yeah <laughs> it's less <bad>. yes <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I i think um like there is no struck such a paranoid person that i think long term i would ultimately on longer trips just relocate the spare to the trunk and use the spare tire carrier as a rotopax mount okay. just because like i'm one of those people that can't leave things well enough alone so like you know i'm going down a trail and like i'm looking in a rearview mirror to see if the if the door is moving or the tire is moving you know <laughs> which isn't really where you're supposed to be looking when you're on the trail so yeah that's uh that's the extent of my lexus updates the other stuff we can talk about some other time okay maybe next week i feel like uh yeah. we have a guest yeah. more in line with that one okay. um my update is very lame. Uh, I finally ordered and they arrived today. Tow hooks for the Suburban. Um, I have a 2017 Suburban. Makes a lot of sense that it doesn't relevant tow hooks. That is a relevant update. Right. Well, there's very, a reason why. Very relevant. Why I know Grady <laughs> exists in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. may have been looking at this stuff for a very long time. Um, actually, GMT 800 ago time. <laughs> um, mm. So, uh, So they're... Z71 tow hooks or so the Z71 tow hooks are the same for God, what is it? It's the CY, whatever, whatever the 15 to 20s are. Um, the 1XK, 1K XX, 1XK XX. Yeah. Well, but those, those X's get filled in with a CY or a GY, depending mm. on if you get a Chevy or a GMC. And then if you get a five for four-wheel drive and you get the uh, you get a five number. for four-wheel drive i believe so like k5 blazers were the or k sorry you get like, a k yeah oh, i don't know this is dumb uh i have a 2017 yeah. suburban 
<laughs> it is not the Z71 trim or the LT trim, so it does not have the front tow hooks. Um, and so ah. I had, because it is the premier edition, which literally is the same as LTZ, but they just changed the name of it in 2017 for no reason. And so I did, I, I think we talked in the past about like, I, wa- I went on that camping trip. I watched Ron um, get his Land Cruiser stuck and winch mm-hmm. himself out. And then I watched <laughs> yeah. his friend, uh, I believe his name is pronounced Yop. And I'll probably have mispronounced that. And I apologize to him because he was a really cool guy. And I liked him quite a bit um, with his 100 series. And I watched him get that stuck and winch himself out. And then I watched Yop winch Ron off something as well, which was, it was a lot of winching and fun. And that's yeah. when I realized Sounds I like literally have no, I have no points on the front of the yeah. Suburban. You're and going soft shackles around the control arm at that point. Right. And I don't want to do that. So yeah, that um, goes I, one of two very different ways. So, and there is something else. I, I don't know why I was looking at my other computer with the other spreadsheet on it, um, but I have to change the uh, lower molding fascia, fascia. I never understand uh, how to pronounce fascia? that word. Yeah. So the one I have, uh, it it's not where the toe hooks go. It doesn't just like pop out. Um, you have to cut a hole in the one that I have or for 65 to $75, I can buy the one that actually has the holes cut in it. Oh, that's um, a that's a seventy five dollars well worth. I mean, it, it would take you probably an hour to, you know, break out the Dremel and actually go about it in a way that doesn't look terrible. So. Yeah. Uh, so I'll probably go ahead and purchase that, and so and just make sure that I have it together. <laughs> but I, I have a plan now for hard mounting on the front, um, and then my second update is I so since I put on the leveling kit and had it uh, aligned, there has been a weird noise in the front end that has been driving me nuts. I've been, I think I've had it back in the shop like four different times. Like, find the noise. Oh, like, just find the noise. And they're like, I, we think it was the, the spare tire was loose. It was never the spare tire. Like, it was always mm-hmm. in the front end. Um, but supposedly, my front sway bar has a bolt that sheared off. And that is now what they think is the culprit of the noise. Oh. Um, so, so it is head, headed back into the shop to get that. It's truck. a Magna Ride truck, it is. right? Okay. So. Is it? A, it's not an end link. It, it's a, just a bolt that's holding the sway bar on somewhere to the frame. Or I didn't get under and dig and hmm. find out. I thought about doing it, and then it got crazy cold, and I was like, "I'm gonna let the shop deal with it." I'm... Though, it, yeah, like the winter. Fact winter it, it has come. Yeah, it, like it's it literally has come. <laughs> when when I had it in and they were looking at it, it was like 72 degrees and like sunny. And I was like, yeah, I'll handle that next weekend. Like, no big deal. Next weekend was like 33. And I was like, Mm-mm. like it's going back to them. I'm yeah, it, it. it was uh, it was 75 here last Saturday. And, and this Saturday is supposed to be like 22 overnight. It's like, yeah, mm, awesome. Did you ever get any of the snow? We got no snow. Um, a okay. few towns north like Hudson Valley got a, a whole bunch of snow. And uh, and Buffalo is expecting 24 to 36. So, I thought it was more than that. It might be depending. I on saw three to five but... feet, and the, yeah. they like move the Bills game to Detroit in a dome, so they don't um, have to deal with it. The town <laughs> that is, you know, famously just south south of Buffalo, that got six feet a few years ago. I think that was like 2014 or 2015. Is like they're they're going through the same thing with like oh fuck, like it's, like it's another just, six feet. Yeah, it's not just like a, you know, this this could be like a little dusting. They're like an oh sh-, you know. A dusting of them again. is what, Everybody, six to eight inches? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. It's like prepare <laughs> to shovel your roof off. But yeah. Anyway, Anyways. uh, and then my last little update is I think I found my next camping setup. Um plant plans and purchases there are uh, in place. Mm-hmm. Um I like it. They're in the like works. It. We just it's gonna take a little bit before I finally reveal it, I think. I gotta make we, sure. Yeah, we've had had some off air conversations about just, it. And, and just know that I was measuring things in and out of the garage. Like that's how I was like, oh, how boy. much height can I add <laughs> and still get in and out of the garage? Oh, Cause yeah. well, I mean, I have no problem parking outside. The Land Cruiser always was parked outside. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I don't have to brush snow off a vehicle, I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> it's fantastic, I've, Ross. I've, I've <laughs> never had that luxury. <laughs> Well, that's why and I'm don't sure. buy a house with a tiny garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Breaking out that sawzall. But speaking of tiny garages, we're we're gonna talk about Grady now. Most of your projects don't fit in a tiny garage, do they? 
No, probably not. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it just depends. <laughs> so do you want to do you want to give us an overview real quick of like yeah, give us your uh, yeah give us your elevator the pitch. elevator pitch <laughs> elevator pitch what is it on these things someone just asked me the other day I honestly I think it's around eight feet does that sound about right sure. like with the with the rack and everything because <laughs> hmm. yeah I, I I think around eight feet sounds about right my forerunner with the roof rack was like yeah it was like six ten so yeah that makes sense so okay. so uh so give us the, the quick spiel on on your company what you do um how you got to doing this and uh and whatnot and and you know what the company is yeah so like i mentioned before i'm i'm the owner at sub overland and we essentially take used Suburbans, Chevy Suburbans and GMC Yukon XLs and just a lot of GM full-size SUVs and uh, make them into Overland, you know, rigs. And so mm -hmm. like, as you can see on the screen here, like the, the back of it, we use a lot of, you know, wood components, kind of like, mm -hmm. like a van wood. And so it's kind of like a hybrid between like van life and overlanding is how I've explained it. Mm -hmm. So there are some, you know, luxuries that a lot of overland builds don't have. And then there's a lot of like drawbacks that like a van would have, like you can stand up in a van and, you know, right. things like that. It's that, that Venn don't. diagram where the two of them kind of have the like crossover bubble. For sure. You can yeah. sleep in yours, but you can also go through drive throughs Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. You can, you can yep. comfortably take it over a, a pass in Colorado, but you probably don't want to use the toilet inside of it <laughs> that's right exactly yeah cooking inside and toilet inside is you know challenging so so why 800s so i've owned two it two gmt 800s i know chris has had a couple and uh, and we just okay. had mac hogan on the show two, last week two weeks ago and, and he's currently uh doing some you know adventures out of his uh out of his Tahoe. So what, what, what made you go to the 800s? So I guess it just kind of naturally went into that year range, you know, for, for the suburban it's 2000 to 2006 mm -hmm. are, our, you know, the most common, you know, year range. I think what it naturally became to, those, I source all the vehicles. And so um, most of the vehicles, but we also have, you know, clients bring us, and we call it BYOB, bring your own bird. <laughs> um, I that's amazing. So, love tonight's man, show. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta make a sticker out of that. But, but I mean, probably 90%, 95% we're, we're sourcing them. So like, I always have suburbans in stock. And so because of that, the GMT 800, it seems like that's the most common one available on like used, you know, to buy used right now. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I honestly, I think it's the best drivetrain like ever made in like any vehicle period. Like five, three and four L80. Yeah. Well, I guess most of ours are half tons. They have the, you know, uh, the, 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 the 60 in them. Yeah, the yep. 60. Yep. But yep. yeah, I mean that, that five, anyway, just for, for what our clients do with them, because our clients aren't, you know, getting in them and tearing the crap out of them in, in like the hardest trails in Moab. It's more right. of like a, you know, four wheel drive. They want something that's capable, but also comfortable and also mm -hmm. affordable, also big. Yep. So to check all yep. those, it was the Suburban. So in my experience, at least the 800s have better build quality and um, are just more pleasant to drive than the 900s at least. <laughs> you know, before you, before you jump to like anything, you know, 2000, like 14, 15 or newer, um, which are just totally different vehicles and, and, and have a totally different price range just for point of entry, um, <laughs> Chris, but what? yeah, the, the 800s are definitely <laughs> like a, a kind of forgotten sweet spot, you know, um, and they must've made 5 million of 
extended versions of both Escalade, um, for sure, Silverado, Sierra, Avalanche. Yeah, yeah, that that small block V8 is, I mean, <laughs> it's everywhere. everywhere. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I guess like how Sub Overland started is kind of a inter- like I don't know, maybe unique to some companies. Um, I, I had, I grew up with like my first car was like a 69 Nissan patrol. Okay. Um, it's like, a, you know, FJ 40. Yeah. That it's, is, I mean, the collective, maybe you guys, yeah, they're super, super rare. Like, yeah, weird, that's not an everyday rare. car for first car. <laughs> so that, so like I grew up with, you know, I, I only had like sixties cars in junior high and high school and I would, you know, so that's where I got like my like love of just like cars in general. And then, mm-hmm. you know, 89 Range Rover, um, Classics, O1, yeah. you know, Oh one <laughs> disco five speed, super rare. Cause it was the five speed, you know, you so like I had some kind of like borderline random... masochist here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had some, you know, and then cruisers, you know, I had a couple, you know, 80 series, you know, um, I just bought one the other day. So like those were nice. like, you know, the off-roading, you know, where I got it. And the Jeeps, you know, had a couple, had an XJ, had a YJ, mm-hmm. you know, so like off-roading was fun and we would do like Moab because we're in Idaho. So it's somewhat close, but as far as like the whole traveling, yes. <laughs> um, traveling and overlanding my, I have three kids now, but I had one kid and we lived full time in a big giant class A motorhome okay. for, oh like a year or so i want to say oh wow so we so we like sold everything sold the house went like super minimalist sold the business i had before and we just like lived on the road Hmm. out of this giant albatross um that's and and so from that like i wanted to create the new like the next business and i wanted something that was like still big but four-wheel drive Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to spend a hundred grand on a four wheel drive van. And so that's, so that's kind of where it was born as far as like, like the suburban was the largest, most affordable, like very good drivetrain. Mm-hmm. And then my prior experience with mechanic work was I maintained a fleet at, um, I was a FedEx contractor. And so okay. all of my vans that I had on our fleet were express vans. You okay. Know, five threes, four eights, six O's. Yep. yep. You okay. That. So, so you have the mechanical side of things. Got yeah. That. So I, I mean, we were driving, I mean, my drivers did not drive easy. I mean, they were <laughs> tearing. There is I mean, no mechanical sympathy when the word fleet is involved. No. So I had firsthand experience of maintaining these and we would get over 400 K very, <laughs> I mean, like all the time out of these. And so I'm just like, okay, this is the ultimate reliability parts are cheap. So like I had mm-hmm. that experience. And so that's kind of how the suburban fell into place. Okay. So the way it works with sub Overland, do you have customers who approach you and ask you for specific builds or do you outfit them yourself and then pitch them, you know, as, as here's a complete package, like we, we looking for a buyer. So we have a, it's always been a waiting list basis, um, even from the beginning. And so you just pay like the deposit Mm -hmm. and then you reserve your spot on the waiting list. And then from there you can choose, we have a, we have, um, a couple of different models you can choose. And so, you know, you choose your model and then, um, when it gets, it depends on the timing of the year, but usually, you know, four or five months, uh, Mm -hmm you know, two to five, whatever it is, uh, before their, uh, pickup date, uh, we'll reach out and they'll reserve their vehicle if they're sourcing it with us. So we'll have our, you know, inventory and they'll, we don't want the red, black or green one. And they'll be like, <laughs> I want the black. <laughs> okay. Um, and so that's, you know, obviously pricing, depending if it's a 2000 suburban with 500,000 miles or a, Oh, six suburban with low miles. Like, so we, mm. we go with, you know, Kelly blue book. And so depending on the year and mileage, and if it has a season one package and things like that, pricing does change. Mm. What's, um, 
What's your like holy grail package of the stuff that you've built and and the vehicles on which you've based them? Um, well, I guess like just for our regular models, uh, the summit is what we call it. It has, you know, it, it just has all the, all the options on it. And then they have options of doing all the add-ons. So like mm-hmm. our, our expo rig that we take to like, you know, we took to the expo, you know, it, um, if I sold it, it would be around like 25 or 26,000. Okay. Um, it's Which just, I mean, it's really old, reasonable in the space. Still pretty reasonable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you add a one or a two to that if it's a van, you know? Yeah. So <clears throat> it's actually the white one right there that you were just on. That's the expo rig. That one's like mm. an 06. And I just put every add on we have. So, you know, winch, awning, yep. uh, BFG tire upgrade. Um, Kept LED, the original wheels everything. and painted them black from yes. what I can see. Have you, yes. um, have you had, have you done an LTZ yet? Have you found a, a 800 LTZ to base a build on? Cause that would be really cool. Oh, wait. So LTZ. There was the a suburban LTZ. LTZ. Yes, that, that was like one big year, five huh? spoke chrome wheels. Yep. Yep. It had chrome side steps and it was like every option they could throw in the thing. I don't, I don't know if it had the e-locker, but it was otherwise like as loaded as an 800 suburban gets. I haven't done, I, I've done some of the GM, the, the 900s, the LTZs with the 20s. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly what you want for overlining 20 inch wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know. Yeah, we could uh, uh, we could collectively probably geek out and just make this an, an 800 specific podcast. Um, <laughs> Hold on, I got I got your your LTZ. Yeah, <laughs> was, uh, that's I was, it. I was that's googling it. so fast. <laughs> yeah, the chrome roof, yes, and side steps and that front bumper, which fascia, fascia, whatever you want yeah, to call it. Fascia, that was, that thing, those are hard rare. to find. They are very rare. Um, it's still, like the Z seventy one rack up top, except they chromed it. Yeah, in the yeah. fascia too. The 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 lower valence. That's a Z seven one with the circular fogs. Yep. Um, yep. And then they have you know the bumper isn't chrome. So yeah, that's, chrome that's interesting. Arguably <laughs> the prettiest of the factory eight hundreds. Yeah, I think that was just an 06, right? It's like yeah, one year. I they think so, yeah. I, yeah. I think they actually limited production on them. Um, but if you really want to geek out over 800s, my 04 Tahoe Z71 um, had barn doors. That's so <laughs> funny. Like, no lie, like right now at the shop, one that's being sent out tomorrow is an 04 Z71 with barn really? doors. If they're so rare, by any chance you come across another one, um, let me know. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, because all I'm of sure them in the Northeast, find another one, Ross. Dude, all <laughs> every single one in the Northeast is literally like it looks like it resembles a Tahoe, and then underneath it consists of nothing except rust. Speed holes, you know. Speed, yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's body it's body management by Lotus. It's constantly getting lighter. Yes. <laughs> by uh by Saltus. Yeah. Yes. So what's in your uh what's in your personal garage or fleet or whatever it is oh, that you gosh. rotate through? Man, Since I'm, now I'm, now we know what you had early on. I'm hoarding for sure as of late. <laughs> um I have I think like you guys, I, I've been listening to some of your guys' podcasts and stuff, and uh, you guys seem not to really hold on to cars very long, or at least. I'm so, worse than Chris. Ross is like, way worse than I am. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm, <laughs> so to the I'm, point where he bought one bad, of my forerunners but... and took it and it was gone in six months? <laughs> no, I bought it in October and I sold it in August. Okay, so that's like 10 months. That's better. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, yeah yep. double digits. Yeah, so usually I'm really similar my whole life. I've never really held on to something, you know, very long. So right now I have an 85 K5 Blazer that um, 85. Yeah, it's it's actually a diesel one. 
the the six two diesel the non turbo diesel right yes yeah or is that's that was like one of the Why army specs like <laughs> <laughs> guys I'm doing what's up dude right now this is, this we is have Chris and Ross. how you doing bud we have extra guests <laughs> here's the three kids that are interrupting us no <laughs> they I, like the blazer though I do like four blazer? so I understand yeah yes. <laughs> You want some? Okay. <laughs> it's a party the now. We have the, uh, the whole crew here. We'll be on in a little bit, okay, guys. <laughs> no worries, uh, that's fine. At least they had oh, manners. Man. Like it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's Sorry. really funny when guests' kids come on. Like Johnny Lieberman's kid has come on a couple times, and, and he's just like, "Yep, this is." this is it now you know yeah and your chris yeah. your kids and and also your dogs have run out you know so yes they have definitely um it's not all right so was the picture i had up the blazer yeah that's the that's the blazer um that one i've had it for like two or three years now i want to say oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. take that. two or take three that. years is like an eon in my house Okay, so we got a blazer in your collection. What else? Mm -hmm. So the blazer, um, and then we have a Toyota Prius. Nice, good, good. <laughs> sidebar. I, uh, sidebar. Sidebar. Sorry. Love, did you love did Toyota you, Priuses? Did love. you see? Did you see the new the one? The new Prius. Like the all-wheel drive one? No, 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 no. The one that was released at the Los Angeles Auto Show yesterday. Yeah. I don't know what's okay. going on, dude. It is is I'm hunting for hot. photos right now to share with you. It, it is like <laughs> it almost it, broke the internet. It makes huh. the the modern Priuses that we have on the road currently Pri look like absolute trash. Like Priy, Toyota has established that the plural of Prius is Priy. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Um, it is like you would not think that it is a Prius or a hybrid or anything having to do them. It's huh. so good. And it, there, it, there's actually a weird running theme with people who have overland vehicles. Okay. That, oh, that's a shit picture. Find, find one that shows the like silhouette a little more. That was, Just, yeah, that was, that was cool. It's it still is good, was a Prius, but at the same time, you know, it looks like a lucid if they sent it through like, you know, an upside down wind tunnel. I saw oh, yeah, an thing's... image earlier today. Wow. That this vehicle has more rake to the windshield than like a Lamborghini <laughs> Gallardo. <laughs> they have, yeah, they've always focused on that for sure. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> but it, um, it, but it, it looks so good. It looks great. We're, I, we might get one. Like just based on the pictures, like if car seat fits, we might get one. Oh, car seat um, fits. There, you've got one kid. It'll fit. We have a yes. the largest car seat in the world. They're all I am fun. not joking. No, no, no. The one we got is the one that like the stroller folds into the car seat and it is exceptionally large. Okay. Um, but there's a weird running theme of people who are into overlanding and off-roading and have lifted trucks and then also just have a Prius. Yeah. Yeah, man. Fuel. This is like my fourth Prius, oh, I wow. would say, over the years. Like, yeah, I absolutely I mean. I love Suburbans, obviously, but uh, <laughs> Prius is a close second. But, but yeah, so randomly, yeah, we, it's like my wife like to, drives that Prius. And then I just purchased, I just bought like a 92 uh, 80 series. Was it the white one? Reserve. Okay. White one. Yep. Um, that thing's actually really clean because usually they're pretty ratty. Um, mm -hmm. Or, you know, interior wise and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, yeah. Or, you know, or like, Fifty-five or sixty thousand dollars, if they're not. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this one, yeah. So I got the '80s series. Um, it's like my third I've had over the okay. years. I want to say. Um, Good. Seat I had a triple covers. locked one, and yeah, the seat covers aren't those great. Mm -hmm. I came. I just bought it just like that and buffed it out. So. Hmm. Um, and I then love, I love the no tint on on the lane. Yeah, fishbowl. Like, yes. It's yeah. fishbowl. <laughs> Yes, it really is. I've been I've been um, missing my ninety four recently, so I completely understand. <laughs> oh, nice. And then we're at Suburban. We're kind of so like I'm. 
We are doing Suburbans, obviously, but um, how we source the vehicle, I kind of wanted to expand that to like other vehicles that I've really enjoyed over the years. I know are like good drivetrains. And so Mm -hmm. we're expanding that out into like Land Cruisers. So if someone wanted like a clean, like a rust-free Land Cruiser, even just like as is, I could buy it for them and then, you know, handle it. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to do the whole, you know, marketplace Craigslist thing. Um, right. And so that's like another service that I'm okay. trying to like offer. Now. Like a broker kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cause you know, cause we're, we're a dealership. Cause I, you know, I buy so many suburbans, you know, I'm kind of, I have to you have legally, the disease. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also we're, um, starting to do a little bit more, uh, well, not more. So the H2 Hummer H2, that was my mm. most recent project. Okay. I've always uh, wanted SUT one. or a full body full body okay so i picked this thing up and it, yeah there there she is <laughs> uh i feel like oh. i'm watching bad boys 2 again for the first time <laughs> all right. 6500 pounds of it but <laughs> also sort of an 800 series exactly so technically that's, these are like no 20? one knows about these things no one uses he's, these for overlanding a 20 right they called it the 20 i forgot the exact yeah they had some weird like yeah because the it. frame is it's like a, a tahoe a, <laughs> like a three-quarter ten silverado and then um well, a little bit of its own like you remember combined. that there was a 50 there was a silverado 1500 hd at the time yep i remember those so you are correct it is the gmt 820 nice god if only i had dedicated that portion of my memory to something <laughs> worthwhile <laughs> your daughter's that's, memories that's a, yeah oh that's a good yeah memory. christ no yeah, that's so long that past one, my daughter's memories that one's been fun i uh put it on 37s stock suspend I mean just do a little level so that's what's cool about those they come stock with 35s and then i fit 37s with no rubbing and so i just oh my that's god. a that that's a cool platform 60 4 65 mm-hmm. You know, fourteen bowl. You know, it's just you know, e locker. All of them came with with, with a electronic rear locker, hmm. full time. All so I just feel like drivetrain wise, I'm very familiar with that drivetrain anyway, and so I just wanted to to kind of test the waters and see if um, people are interested. So I'll be doing that one in the months to come. They um the H two obviously had its movement when it was new, um, and then it was you know quickly onto the uncool list of things but it, it's it's kind of coming back you know um like we're in a place now with modern safety and modern power trains where like the h2 was 6600 pounds and that's not unheard of for vehicles now you know and and we just had Derek powell on and they obviously ruined one on top gear <laughs> you know but <laughs> but the h2 is cool i mean oh, i remember right. i remember in 2007 looking at tires and being like holy shit 315s like like you know jeeps the the uh rubicon at the time was running like 285s for <laughs> sure know, still yep. is but yeah what are you doing yeah, so that, was, that was cool um i haven't really decided what to do yet the roof <laughs> on that thing is intense it is so wide so like i can fit usually we do a 100 watt panel on our Suburbans, because mm-hmm. they're like, because I'm like on, on the width of them. This thing, I can do a full 200 watt. I mean, I, I could put like 400 watts of solar on this bad boy if I wanted to, d- depending on the build. So anyway, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. And I kind of want to keep it for myself too. <laughs> so like, it's always, it's always like the challenge with how many seats, because I got the three kids, you mm-hmm. know, so mm-hmm. most of our builds are two to three seats, I would say total because we got the interior and rip out the second row for the most part so there's more space but i can't do that because i use it with my kids and so anyway that's kind of my dilemma but on top of that i also have i an 08 c71 suburban that we've used for years i've had that one for years too a lot of a lot of miles put on that thing um and then i have an 05 uh, suburban Z71, and I bought it specifically because 
it had like 298,000 when I bought it. And I, I wanted, you know, I always like practice what I preach. Like I always tell people that these things would go 300. Mm -hmm. So here it was, it's over 300 now. Right. And yeah, uh, you original engine just purrs, doesn't use any oil. Anyway, it's just, so those are my, my little fleet. That's, that's <laughs> pretty good. I mean, as far as off-routers and overlanders go, that's pretty well-rounded, you know, 80 and H2 is like as much of a spread as, as you can have <laughs> sort of going, you know, something like a 40. So that's fun. That's fun. Is there anything, uh, anything you're hunting for that you can divulge us in just, uh, you know, because everybody here in this show and everybody probably listening to the show also does the same thing that we all do, which is casual perusing of the, uh, of the Facebook oh, yeah, marketplace sure. and Craigslist and expo and all the you know mud and all those sites so i mean i've always i've never had a 60 series or a 40 mm -hmm. um so i'm you know always nice. secretly you know if i if i find something i can't say no to i'll just jump on it mm -hmm. um but that's that's really honestly it's funny i was you know i i've been driving the 80 series around and um you know they have their place don't get me wrong i mean like way more capable than a suburban obviously you know and it just they they kind of have that classic look the classic feel as you drive in the thing it's just you know there's like a lot of mm -hmm. things about the 80s and just land cruisers in general but i keep on just going back like my the suburbans are there's just so much about them that i just love like parts, I don't have to like wait for anything mm. ever, no matter yeah. where I'm at. You're yeah. an O'Reilly. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Napa, oh, just... Rock Auto, like same day, next day delivery. Yeah. I mean, like cheap and just like easy. I, I, I just, I, I'm more familiar with it, I guess, but I feel like they're really easy to work on. Um, what kind of, uh, what kind of vehicles did you grow up in? I feel like there's usually a through line between people have tendencies toward as adults and, and what they, you know, what their parents or their friends, parents drove as when they were kids. So my family, we had land cruisers and suburbans really. <laughs> um, called it fucking called it. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean like my, my parents had a 60 series and the muffler fell off in Utah and so they went into the dealership and it was 91 when this, when this happened and, you know, 80 series just came out. Right. Cause they skipped yep. the year in America with a night. Yep. Right. And so they were like, Oh, they traded in, they traded in the 60 for oh the 80. God. It was like this stripped down 80 series with no running. It was supposed to go to some other country anyway. So they had this 80 series. We got T-boned in it. I remember all this stuff. It was a solid. Jeez. And then like 90s Suburbans, like mm -hmm. we, you know, we had, you know, a three quarter ton at one point and then 15 passenger vans. My family always had mm -hmm. a 12 or 15 pass. Interesting. Okay. So, so that's, that. yeah, you're, uh, we're, we're getting one plus one equals two here. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And then funky, funky old, you know, European stuff, like import stuff. My dad's always been into like triumphs. So like TR3s, mm. MGB, Saab. Wow, TR3s my, are my, going my, back there. <laughs> yeah. They, they, yes. You know, like so I, my second car was a 69 Saab 96. If you guys are familiar with. Oh my God. My condolences. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's great, man. V4, yeah. the V4 power. Dude. Four on the tree. Oh my god! About this was your quirky, car? quirky and odd. I think if I were to have one car as my side project toy thing right now, it would be a blue nine three Vigan, the three door car. Was it? That's that's a great choice. Yeah, <laughs> cool. sleeper, yeah. ultimate sleeper. There we go. Yeah. So I, I had probably three or four of those. How? Um, How did up. you get three or wow. four of those? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If if it was for sale, I guess my family bought oh it. My God. <laughs> How do three know. or four of those get to Idaho? <laughs> uh, That's amazing. And my dad's just he's he was just really into old cars, and so we would, 
you know, I, I would just buy, drive it for a while and kind of, kind of flip, you know, yeah. um, gr- growing up and yeah, a, a Subaru 360. We're yep. going way out there. Yep. I had one of those. Okay. That's early. That's, um, VD. Yeah, sixties. Oh, that's sixties. Oh, wow. I'm not even sixties. Two stroke, two Wait. stroke rear engine. Oh God. You had a Subaru three, like you drove this. Oh yeah, man. That thing's great. It's got suicide doors. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, anything with the suicide doors is a, is a, you know, automatic. Yes. Like I thought so. the Saab was really interesting, but holy crap. Like this is like, what is the little, oh man, I think the hinges back. are at the back of the door. <laughs> Japanese beetle. It's gold. Yep. It's like, it's like a beetle and an Isetta crossed. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So you I, I don't Isetta, know. We're dude. always into <laughs> the weird stuff. Okay. All right, so we, 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 see the, we see the through line here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, I grew up in a household with Jeeps and, and you know, GM SUVs, and my dad also had a, a bunch of Saabs. So, <laughs> nice Saab guy. All right. Yeah, that's... Uh, Ross, there, what was the Saab you said you want? 9.3 Vigit. 9.3. Yeah. Yeah. No one... It's funny. Those, <clears throat> I, I, I feel like... Oh yeah, this I mean this is way out there, but no one's really I, I had this friend, he was like he was doing like a Lexus what what are those? Like the all-wheel drive, no, the rear wheel drive Lexus. They only came in automatics. I'm trying to remember. I asked Six, 250 or 300. 250. Yeah. So he had a 250. I know and what he's going. he was like swapping. He's like, Yeah, let, let's do like a six speed out of a Nissan. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, dude, just buy a sob. And it'll be faster than anything you're ever going to make. Oh, well. And it's well, going to be a well, thousand bucks. Dude, it's such a slippery <laughs> slope, though, because those, that's a five door. No, you got to find a three door. No. Five doors. Five, it had that, three, there we go. There we go. That minus the plane in the background. But yeah, that well, car that is still such a pretty shape, you know? And also, like, the thing that gets forgotten is like visibility. We've forgotten visibility. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, sobs are very, yeah, they are very on top of that. Yeah, no, but those IS 250s, 300s, whatever they were, like the 2001, 2002 cars, I mean, people, you know, do two Jay-Z swaps in them with like the six-speed that was bolted up to the Supra. And uh, yeah, God damn, should have bought one of those when they were eight grand. <laughs> those are great, yes. You said 350? Um. I, I, the IS two fit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. The really fun one is manual swapping an IS Sport Cross, which was the wagon. Dude, cross. finding the Sport Cross is the hard part. Yep they they brought rear wheel drive Lexus wagon from like O two. Hmm. Really, not. I, I don't even know the last time I've seen one of them. Uh, who's the guy uh, in? Texas, who's also the photographer. Um, he's got a Porsche, but he has a sport cross too. Um, Kevin, Kevin, capturing the machine. Yeah. Yes. He has yeah. a sport cross. Does he? Oh, that's fun. Or ha- knows someone nearby with one. Huh. Because I feel like he's the only one I ever see that posts huh. pictures of. Yeah, that thing. I have never seen one of those. That is the wrong angle. It is not an attractive vehicle from that angle. No, it's not. <laughs> the, no, it's the front three quarters is bad. The rear. Do the three, image cool. search was, much? Yeah, it's that's not much cool. better oh, from the back. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe my memory is. Uh, it's like a uh, rose tinted glasses or whatever that phrase is. You know? Yeah. Well, my, my oh, favorite man. thing lately is there's a, a guy on the West Coast. He likes accurate TSX wagons. And every time I find one, I take a picture and just send it to him. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've run into like three in the last two weeks. I'm like, why are there um, accurate TSX wagons here? One of my wife's best friend's parents have one still. Bought a new. Still have it. Right? And so yeah. these are from like 2006. Oh, speaking of sobs, I was going to say. Um, I realized, Chris, when I was sending you those pictures of the Life Force lights, the Lexus, if you, you know, so in most cars, if you turn down the brightness on the dashboard as low as it goes, it'll still have the full gauge cluster, you know, all of the interior lights still on like the lowest 
light setting there is. Yeah. So there will still be some kind of light coming from the gauge cluster. In my truck, if you turn the lights down all the way, it turns the all of the lights off. Oh, except really? For the, except for the in, little green indicator light that says the headlights are on, um, huh. which I thought was really cool and thought that it was kind of like the Saab switch. Yeah, it's it like Saab into, night mode or whatever. Yeah, and like <laughs> turns it into, you know, jet fighter mode. So it's just tack and speedometer. But they didn't think it that well through and it just turns all the lights off. So <laughs> you can't see anything. <laughs> you have no idea how fast you're going. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice. There's so many photos of Saab night mode. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was really funny. I was like, wow, this is so cool. Oh no, it's not. This is really disappointing. It's like I have to turn this back on. Otherwise, I, I'm doing you know 60 and a 12. <laughs> yeah, you can't actually know what your indicator is. Indicator yeah. speed is. Yeah. Why is that oh, being so weird? So, Greg, do you have any uh, any trips coming up? Any exciting? I know you you said you went to Expo. Is there any uh, adventures upcoming for uh, for you and Sutherland? You know, I just do like quick little day trips recently. You know, nothing real epic. Kind of just local stuff around Idaho that is, you know, no one to really know about. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's that's I, I spent. You know, I the business like I'm I'm the mechanic, I'm the the marketer, I'm the. It's just we're we're a really small company, you know. So, um, mm -hmm. I really haven't found the time to <laughs> get out there as much as i should yeah yeah the honestly, uh, sole proprietorship but... one-man show is kind of uh it's it's great and it you know it's limiting too though is it just you do you have any employees any staff or so it's it's me and then i have um one full-time employee at the shop with us um, and mm -hmm. he does mainly, you know, the woodwork and, uh, like, like the build side of it. And then I'm, I'm doing all the mechanic work. And so like, I do all, you know, when we get each rig, you know, we, it's, it's like a 20 year old rig. So there's like a lot of stuff to do on it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm doing all that. And then we have, my wife does the web site. She edits my YouTube videos cause I have a YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. I'm. I'm either doing mechanic work or behind a camera. Okay. And so like filming Sounds myself or the, so that's <laughs> doing, you know, like pictures anyway. So like, I, I, I love the camera work and stuff too, but, and then my brother actually does the email and calls. So we're okay. kind of, he's like, he, he's, he's remote. He's in Utah. Hmm. Um, but. Uh, hey, light is uh, nimble, you know? Easy to turn yeah. things around. Yeah, we've, yeah. I mean, throughout the years, there's, we're about to do number 200 of, of this. So wow. we've, Holy there'll be shit. 200 of these on the road. Um, but now I'm just doing about like two or three a month now. Um, during like COVID in the last two years, we were doing like six a month. Okay. Wow. So for like two years straight, we we're really pumping them out, I, I felt like. And, hmm got a little exhausting you know I mean? <laughs> yeah so now i'm dude burnout just, is a real thing across every yeah. industry so yeah so we uh, there's almost almost it's crazy there's almost 200 of these things on the freaking road that's why and uh our clients i love our clients they're so fun and it's just been a really good yeah really good gig so far <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well you certainly have me looking for another 800 uh, much <laughs> i do <laughs> unfortunately have the opportunity to buy back my avalanche which is an 800 yep. i had it yep. for i think like seven years so if you Those want to build cool. an avalanche if i buy it back maybe i'll send it out to you <laughs> yeah i've actually Do something I've never i've never built an avalanche you know be fun Sounds like something yeah. to do, Ross. <laughs> yeah i dude i don't know if i if i buy that truck back i i can have um other conversations i have to have um, <laughs> is it uh oh, is it God. the three quarter ton with the eight one no budget? god no are you <laughs> no. kidding fuck man every single person i know that's had a three quarter ton 800 avalanche or suburban they say they do not and have never averaged over 11 miles per gallon <laughs> wow 
So sounds, pass anything but a gas right. station is the phrase. Um, no, it was an 05 Z71. Um, it was my dad's, then it was mine, then it was my brother's, and now it's one of my best friends. So it's a uh, it's been passed along. It's had a life. Yeah, could use a little love. Somewhere <laughs> I have photos of it. I have to dig. Dude, it was a great truck. Like it was all the truck I ever needed, and you know, now it's owned by a, a extremely close friend of mine, and and long term. You know, I've known him. We've known each other since we we're in like first grade. Um, and he has a Corvette that is borderline psycho death machine. So he knows what he's doing with a GM vehicle. Nice. Yeah, I wonder where I hid those photos. That was like show two. Yeah. So, so <laughs> show Ross. two. Yeah. So Ross, you have like a GX four. I mean, a GX four sixty. Four sixty. Yeah. And yeah. then Chris, you have the suburban, right? We the so 15? we have a twenty seventeen suburban, and we have a two thousand eight Sequoia. <clears throat> Sequoia. That's what. It, okay. Yeah, everything's a four kid mobile. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. I've had one Sequoia. It was it was an old. It was the first gen one. Yep. Um, and we first gen are coming around. I saw, and I shit you not. This is not fallacy or anything. The cleanest first gen Sequoia that I've seen in the Northeast since they were in production today. Really, it was like really? spectacular. And I was behind it going up to the shop that was working on the Lexus, and I was like, I literally like. Gave the guy a thumbs up. I'm not even joking. I, I saw one on four runner wheels today and I was like, oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> like I didn't see that yeah. coming. Yeah, those are, yeah, those are great. Yeah, I thought those, um, we, I had one two or three years ago that we did, you know, suspension on. I didn't do interior on it, but uh, yeah, those are great. That four seven will go forever. Dude, as long as, as long as you, Keep up on the timing belt. Yep, that four seven is a uh, is a long long termer. Yes, that's cool. Okay, nice. I've always wanted a four sixty. Those I actually almost bought one a couple weeks ago here locally. It was I should have. It was it was a good deal, but <laughs> I just I just have so much inventory that like I have some dead inventory. I just like mm-hmm. like we're doing this Sun Raider build right now. Yeah. Um, have you have you considered like cars and bids? Cars and bids is that where I put it like like bring a trailer type? It's yep. yeah, it's Doug Demiro's bring a trailer. Okay, that thing oh. on fucking cars and bids would go for like a number you wouldn't even think of. What this thing right here, the Sun that Rider? thing, yes. <laughs> We'll, well, we'll have some conversations after the show. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll, sir, yeah, no, I, dude, like, not I owe Doug an kidding. email anyway. <laughs> Eclectic, I think it's a, yeah, boutique, stuff like that is like that is their wheelhouse. Yeah, so we're, I mean, but mainly, yeah, I mean, yeah, suburbans. That's that's kind of. <laughs> I, I I just keep on distracting myself with all of these like personal fun. You know, you guys get it. Yeah, yeah, and because. Like, Got to keep the most important thing the most important thing, right. you know, and that's <laughs> for me. That's the suburban, and it just keeps coming back to, and it's just so practical. And mm-hmm. it's a- anyway, <laughs> we get great. it, dude. We get it. So well, sweet. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up the show real fast, and we're gonna keep talking. Um, <laughs> you can rate and review the show on uh, iTunes wherever you listen to. I said iTunes again. God, Apple iTunes. Podcasts. I am Apple old. Podcasts. I'm so old. Um, like and subscribe on YouTube. Um, you can follow Grady at Sub Overland. It's everywhere, right? You were fortunate to be the guy who got all of the one username. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Reddit, <laughs> all over the place. My favorite, my favorite, like Friendster. Twi- no, my favorite, like <laughs> Twitter is burning stat the other day was somebody was talking about like the percentage of traffic that like all of the social media engines drive. And obviously Facebook is still like the dumbest, best one. And it was Elon talking about how much traffic Twitter drives and literally Pinterest is only like 0.2% behind Twitter. Like what about Tumblr? Is not a good. How, how many percentages behind both of them is Tumblr? Uh, it wasn't listed. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, yes. Follow Grady at Sub Overland. Yeah. You can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends on Instagram. 
Um, I am at Overlanding Dad on Instagram and for now Twitter. We'll we'll see how long it hangs around. There's so many people I talk to there for weird car and like overland off-road stuff. Ooh, Ross, I gotta send you an email about it, somebody else who contacted me through Twitter. So anyway, uh that's yes, it. Please. That's our show. Thank you, Grady. Cool. Yep. Thanks, Grady. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. 